Hey guys, this is Camille Lambert. I'm here with the Kentucky PFR team. They've got the planner out and they're starting to go over things for the upcoming planting season. So we thought this would be a really great time to shoot a video and show you guys some tips as you're getting ready for spring. Like Camille said, we're the PFR team here at the Henderson, Kentucky site. I'm Brandon Summers. I'm the PFR lead here at the farm. With me today, I've got Luke Wilson. He's our new PFR technician. He just started here this winter. And uh, today we're going to go over some things that we're looking at here with our planter as we pulled it out of the building this morning to get it ready for spring. There's a few things we wanted to share with you guys that we feel are very important to setting the stage early for that, those high yielding crops. So we want to start off today talking about our parallel linkage. This is something you check as Luke's going to demonstrate here by picking up on it with no down force to it, making sure you don't have that side to side uh, motion in there. This planter, we've replaced the bushings on a couple years ago, so they're still good. Uh, so that's something you wanna look at. It keeps that row unit from swaying out in the field as you're going across the field. The next thing we're gonna look at is our disc openers. <clears throat> to check those, uh, we wanna pull them off of the row unit. First, we wanna look at our bearing to make sure it's in good shape and we don't have play. This one here, the bearing is out. And while we took it off, we check the distance on it and it's measuring 14 and 3 eighths. So anything under 14 and a half inches, we want to go ahead and take off and replace. So since the bearing's out, we're going to replace it anyway, but it's also measuring that it's wore out. Luke's got a brand new one here. If we measure it, it should be 15 inches. So it looks like that one's good to go on the planter. While we got those disc openers off, we want to go ahead and check our seed tube, uh, make sure that it's in good shape. As you can see, this seed tube that we took off the planter has got the tip has been broken off of it. it. Must have hit something or something along those lines. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. What that allows for <clears throat> is it keeps that seed from ricocheting as it comes down. It places it evenly down into the trench and doesn't create bounce where the seed could land somewhere other than the middle of the seed trench. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those seed tubes as well. So while we've got the disc openers off and we put those back on, we wanna make sure that they're gap dry. We should have uh, an inch to two inches of contact with the two blades where they come together. So to check this, simply take two business cards. You stick one in from the top where the disc openers are open. Run them down till they stop. Take your next one and come up from the bottom. As you can see here, it's a good thing we check because this these two disc openers have wore enough that they're no longer touching. You shouldn't be able to run those business cards together. Ideally, you'd want them to be, like I said, that inch to two inch range. So when you run those two together, they stop within that inch to two inch range. So we'll be taking this apart and regapping those wheels. So to do that, you simply take the nut off the end of the disc opener, pull it off. There should be some shims behind there. You just simply start removing those shims equally from both sides until you get it gapped correctly. So this planter doesn't have no-till cultures on there, but that's something else that we need to look at if we have that option on our planter. Uh, this planter has floating row cleaners, so it's not an issue. But if they, you have the no-till culture, we want to make sure that that no-till culture is not running at the same depth or deeper than our disc openers because that could create a false bottom to our seed trench. We want to make sure that that, that no-till culture is running at least a quarter of an inch above where the bottom of our seed trench will be. So the next thing we're going to look at here on our planter is our meters. So it's recommended that every year when you put your planter away for the winter that you take the plates out. This allows for the gaskets and the brushes in these meters to uh, relax so they don't conform to the plate. But we also want to look at them in the spring to make sure that there's no excess wear on them, uh, that they're still going to seal up to our plates good. And to look at our brushes and make sure they're not wore out or stretched in any way. So we recommend that you get your meters put on a test stand each year. This will help you eliminate any potential issues that you could see after you start planting because once the crop comes up it may be too late to fix those kind of issues so if we can catch it on a stand we'll catch it before it's ever a problem in the field so the next thing we want to check with this planter is our closing wheel alignment 
to make sure that it's trailing equally on both sides of the uh, seed trench that's being created. So as you can see there, Luke was making sure that we didn't have excess play in our tails here. You can see that one's fairly tight. He's also checking the bearings there in our closing wheels to make sure they're in good shape. So this planter here, we're running the Yetter Collie Twisters. That is a PFR proven uh, wheel for us. But what we want to do is we'll set the planter down. You can do this in the shop if you have a big enough area uh, and gently drag that across the floor about five feet or so to make sure that where the disc openers are making contact is truly going down the center of those two closing wheels. We may need to adjust that tail left or right to make sure that we are hitting center and we don't have a wheel running directly on top of that seat trench. Another thing we want to check is we just kind of want to go over the planter for general maintenance. We want to make sure that things like our starter system are working correctly. I'd recommend maybe filling your starter tanks with just plain water uh, before you get to the field and fill it with starter and realize that you have an issue. Makes the maintenance a whole lot cleaner and easier. So we'll fill these tanks up with water, make sure that we don't have any leaks, our pump's working correctly before we go ahead and fill it with nitrogen. <clears throat> then we also just want to kind of look over the bar, make sure there's no uh, cracks or things of that nature. Kind of look at our hydraulic hoses. If we have one that the coating's starting to peel off of, we'll go ahead and replace it or maybe a cylinder that's leaking some and uh, get that stuff fixed. It all helps to prevent downtime in the field when we do get those sunny days to go to the field. And then once we get to the field, we want to check to make sure our planter's level. And there's many ways you can do this. I'd recommend looking in your operator's manual. They usually give you a good example of how to do it. On this particular planter, uh, we'll set the planter down, take a, just a normal builder's level, and sit on the main frame there. It's hard to see with the markers, but to make sure that that's level. And then we simply adjust that by adjusting the hitch on the planter to uh, the tractor that we have. This will keep your row cleaners from plowing into the ground or like I said, creating that false bottom with the no-till coulter if it's leading ahead of the uh, disc openers and makes everything work perfectly. So good planter maintenance doesn't just have to do with the planter, but with our tractor as well. We want to look this tractor over, make sure we don't have any hydraulic leaks on the back, uh, do good maintenance to the tractor like we normally would for anything else. But we also want to check the tire pressure on our planter to make sure that it's inflated by what the manual says because this can throw off our fertilizer and our population settings if we have ground drive transmissions for either one of those functions. And then the final thing that we want to make sure we have done when, before we go to the field with the planter in the spring is just check with the manufacturer of your monitors or your planter to make sure that you have all the current updates on your monitor so that it works as it should when it gets to the field. So Brandon and Luke have given us a lot of really good tips today. We've put together a one-pager. You can take it to the field with you. It's kind of a checklist for all the things we went over today. So get ready for planting season, and we hope you have a nice spring.